Hello, friends, and welcome to episode number 57 of Nostalgia Talk. I'm James, but you guys already knew that. And joining me, this is a very, very exciting episode of Nostalgia Talk because I have a very, very special guest with me. And now to introduce my guest star, that's what it's time to do. And it really makes me happy to introduce to you the one and only Louise Gold. Hello. Hello. I'm very happy to be talking to you. I'm, I hope I'm, I'm not a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I can guarantee a lot of uh, uh, listeners of the podcast have been looking forward to this one for a while, as have I. For anyone who doesn't know, Louise is one of the original Muppet performers, which is a real treat because we, and when I say we, I mean myself as the host and you guys as the listeners, it's not every day we get to hear from some of the uh, members of the OG Muppet crew. So this is a real treat. Uh, she's an actress uh, and puppeteer who's done theater, TV, film. You might know her best from The Muppet Show, where she did Annie Sue Pig, The Afghan Hound, Mildred Huxtetter, Zelda Rose. Uh, Lou, the country singer. Basically, if it was a female singing uh, skit, it was usually done by her. Like nine, ta- nine times out of ten, it was done by Louise. She was on Sesame Street and its UK spinoff, The Furchester Hotel, as Fenella. Uh, she was on Spitting Image, The Dark Crystal, The Animal Show, Ghost of Fafner Hall, and uh, has done theater versions of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Mamma Mia. So, Louise, welcome to Nostalgia Talk. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Mm-hmm. Let's talk nostalgia, baby. Yeah. Yes, let's let's uh, let's talk nostalgia. Let's get right down to business with what inspired you to want to get into acting and what were some of your biggest inspirations? Well, I my mother was an actress and she wasn't a star. She was a jobbing actor. And when she had children, she gave everything up and then as we got a little bit older, we didn't have a lot of money and she was trying various things to earn money and went back to acting. So I saw someone doing it as their job. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't glamorous. It was just very, so I knew what the reality of being an actor was. I had no illusions about you'd be in Hollywood and you'd be earning a fortune. She went off, she did, she was in the mousetrap for a while. She did bits of telly, she did, acting so I knew what it was like and then uh, I she met someone who was sending their daughter to a stage school and when I was 11 I went to a stage school where I learned to sing and dance and because of the sexist ideas of the day my brother didn't go to a stage school because my mother said well it's different for boys but if it doesn't work out for Louise she can always get married ouch (laughs) Yes, indeed. So ironically, uh, that meant I went to a stage school and my brother didn't. And I've never got married. I have a partner and a son, but I have never got married. So I guess that means it worked out. Yeah. So I went and learned dancing, singing, acting. And I was never a very good dancer. I'm not very loose, you know, you have to have a very specific physicality to be a ballet dancer or any kind of dancer. But I I tell people I move well. So all those things have been incredibly useful in my career that I learned from the time I was 11. And then uh, I went out into the world to try and make a living when I was 17. Mm-hmm. And, um, I have been incredibly lucky and in some way or another, I have ever since been making a living in acting, singing, moving and puppeteering. Mm -hmm. So did you start out in theater when you uh, started as an actor? Yes, yes. My very first job while I was still at drama school was in a pantomime. I was the fairy queen. And then I went out. You don't, I don't think people do it anymore, but there's something called acting ASM where you're acting, but you're also stage managing. And I was doing things being the understudy and stage management and doing all that. Uh, I did a tour of hair a long time ago, one of my very first things, very tatty, tatty, tatty tour of hair. Um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, uh, various things. And I was doing a tour of a show called The Land of the Dinosaurs, 
which was based broadly, it's kind of comedic musical on um, the land that time forgot, where they go chasing to find a lost world where there is a dinosaur. And it was a rather silly show, but fun. And that was the show I was in when I got the call from my agent about an audition for something called The Muppet Show. Mm. So was The Muppet Show like the first time you ever did a TV show? How had I ever done? Um, I think it was. Yes, I think it probably was. It's all so long ago, James. I can't quite remember because I was younger than you are now. I did that audition and it was a very long time ago, but I think it probably was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And that, and if if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that was your first ever uh, experience with puppeteering. Am I right? Yes, I done. We have. I don't know if you have them um, in your country. We have things Pelham puppets, which were very popular when I was little. They were marionettes, string puppets. Oh, okay. And we had a couple of those. All the kids had them when I was little, and you always had them. And very quickly, they'd get tangled up. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, you know, not being a great puppeteer, I remember mine being tangled up. And when I was little, again, my mum loved making things and we would make uh, glove puppets with papier-mâché heads mm -hmm. with an egg. You'd put the paper around an egg and then you'd, um, a blown egg, you'd blow the egg, then you'd stick paper around it, make a face and then make it a little dress or something so we so I played with puppets okay but it wasn't certainly never my desire to be a puppeteer okay so what is the uh, main difference for you uh between like being on stage like when you're showing your face on stage and um puppeteering where everyone's just kind of looking at the puppet on your hand and paying not that much attention to the person working it well, when I started, that was very, very devastating for me because I wanted them to look at me. And learning how to channel it into your hand for me was the biggest thing because I was really like, but no, look at me, look at me. I'm an actor, I want you to look at me. And I would go into the studio um, with makeup and, you know, trying to... I wanted attention. So it was a real struggle for me to learn to act with my hand and to put it into my puppet. Because initially, I really fought against that wasn't what I thought I'd be doing. And also, I would see Frank Oz, Jim Henson, Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Dave Goles, and Steve, in fact, joined after I did The Muppet Show. But I would see these people and think, these people are geniuses. I can't do this. They're amazing. And it took me such a long time. And I had a different skill. You know, they loved that I could sing. And that was one of the things that I did a lot of on The Muppet Show, with what were called the UK spots. And yeah. Uh, because they weren't in the American edition because it was two minutes shorter. Right, yeah. I was just going to explain that to the listeners. Um, I, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what that means. Um, so as Louis said, yes, the Muppet show was a little bit longer in the UK um, because it was um, there was a little skit that was added uh, to what wasn't in the US broadcast. And, a and as a matter of fact, a lot of the most famous Muppet song skits were usually UK spots. For example, Miss Piggy's waiting at the church. Uh, any yeah. old iron. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of the uh, Muppet Show uh, famous bits were mostly just uh, put out there in the UK. But I feel well, like most of them are probably. But it available. wasn't just the UK. It was called the UK spot. But I, I, as I understood it, it was everywhere but America because America had more commercials. Right. Yeah. It was known as the UK spot. Mm -hmm. So, um, what was Jim Henson like? He was fantastic. I, you know, I came into it. I was 20 when I started with the Muppets. I hadn't done any puppeteering. I was the only English person in the show. I was the only woman before Kathy Mullen joined again later on. And um, I never ever felt 
you know, that I was put down. Everyone was there because they were talented. Mm -hmm. And Jim, you weren't there unless he thought you were great and had something to give. And his criticism, it always felt like it was only because he knew you could do it better. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, why are you doing like that? You're rubbish. It was, I want you to do your best because you're brilliant. You're all brilliant. So I never, ever felt... I mean, I'd, I'd watch, as I say, I would watch these people and think they, they are incredible. You know, watching Jim and Frank work together, this brilliant comedy double act like anybody, you know, the best comedy double acts. And they're geniuses. And I just learned so much. But Jim was always friendly. You know, he felt like a father figure, I think, to all of Aww. us. And um, he and and what was so so lovely, and again was something I take I try to remember and take with me. He loved what he was doing. He worked harder than any of us. He knew how lucky he was. He had this, you know, the best toy box in the world with all these talented people in front of the camera, behind the camera, the puppet builders. You know, the people were working, making the costumes. He loved their talent and their inspiration. And he got such joy from what he was doing. And the man worked so hard. You know, he, he was always there leading from the front. But joyously and always figuring, you know, he was working the whole time. In the lunch break, he'd go off and have meetings. At the weekends, he'd be flying back to the States because it was all made in London at Elstree. Right. Yeah, it's um, funny. Every time I tell people that, they never believe me. Like, I always say, oh, the Muppet Show was done in London. And they're like, no, it wasn't. I'm like, you don't know your facts. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was all done here. So, <clears throat> but, um, you know, a lot. most of the guests were American. All the other puppeteers were American. So, yes, it felt American. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. to, to, all, to all my friends who, who don't believe me when I say The Muppet Show is done in London, does Louise's accent prove you wrong? Just saying. <laughs> well, I could have gone to America because, and also when they did the Muppet film, the most, not the most recent, because that was... Um, Muppets Most Wanted? Muppets Most Wanted. But yeah, the one that, I, yeah, that was the most recent, yeah. The one before that, they were kind of setting up that The Muppet Show had been made in America. Mm -hmm. And it were, that was one of the things I thought, well, The Muppet Show, it was in the Muppet Theatre. We never said it was in England or America. Right. It was. But they kind of... As far as I can remember, I didn't work on that film, but you know they were putting out that it was an American made in America, mm -hmm. but it absolutely wasn't. And Jim, and the reason for that was, but because Lou Grade saw the potential of it, mm -hmm. because in America people thought of it as Sesame Street and kids, yeah, they would give it the budget because it was a huge budget. It was a very expensive show. And Lou Grade saw the potential as a family show rather mm -hmm. than a children's show. Right. So mm. brought it here. And Jim loved working in England and loved the crews. He the talent of the crews, the set builders, all the people here, he loved and valued enormously. And he, I think he liked living in England. You know, he, the family still have his house. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Mm. And you also got to work very, very closely with um, one of the, or should I say, like the Muppet guy, uh, the one and only. And if you, if any of you listeners are good friends of mine, you've definitely heard his name from me before. And if you're a Muppet fan, then you know what he's known for: the one and only Jerry Nelson. Yes. And for those, for those of you who don't know, uh, and again, if you're a Muppet fan, you probably do. If you're friends with me, you probably do. Uh, but Jerry was, uh, again, one of the original Muppet performers uh, on Sesame Street. He was the Count, my favorite, Harry Monster, uh, Sherlock Hemlock, Biff, Amazing Mumford. And on The Muppet Show, he was Uncle Deadly, Floyd, Robin, Dr. Strangepork, and also was the title character in Emmett Otter and Gobo on Fraggle Rock. And Louise, you did a bunch of skits on The Muppet Show and on Sesame Street as well with Jerry. Um, what was working with him like? Joyous. Okay. I, I just, I just feel 
you know, I can't believe it when I look back because it was a total accident for me, a real, you know, there are a lot of people I work with now who grew up watching The Muppet Show and that was what they wanted to do. And they're in puppeteering because they watched it. I had never seen it. I had no idea. We didn't have Sesame Street in England at that point. I had no idea. So to meet these people and work with them was joyous. And Jerry and I did all kinds of duets together. Mm -hmm. so, and I just, I adored him. I absolutely adored him. And I adored working with him. And, you know, when you find, it's so easy when you work with people that you really like and are on a creative, um, you understand creatively. It makes it terribly easy. And sometimes it's not easy when you work with people you don't click with. Not that they're bad, but you just don't have an affinity with. So working with Jerry was one of my great, great joys. And I feel so lucky to have known him and worked with him and then gone back and done stuff on Sesame Street with him later on. Mm. And he was just gorgeous. He was so talented and so laid back. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, that's what I've always heard about, uh, about him, that he was really chill and laid back. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the thing that I always say about it, it wasn't like there weren't tensions. And it was, it was the kind of family, the dysfunctional family, where everyone had their place, the children, all the children. Jim's children, the puppeteers. And yeah, there were tensions and there were the dynamics, but everyone loved each other hugely as well and, and had, had each other's backs. And we worked so physically close together. And, you know, why did I get the job? Well, you could say it was because I was incredibly talented. Well, it might be, but it's also because in some way, we were all able to get on. You know, someone else might have been more talented, but you had to be under a table in somebody's armpit, literally so close together. So there had to be some, somehow you got on, you were able to do that. And, and also I was taught, which was the other thing, you know, the, the flukes of life that all the puppeteers were tall. So I was tall, so I fitted in, you know, the weird things, of why you know I'm still puppeteering all these years later, and and you know it's just weird. And how did it, why did it work? Why why am I still doing it? Uh, and I love these people. And I you know before um, Christmas, I was out in LA. There was a Dark Crystal convention. Oh yeah, I saw that on uh, on Facebook. Yeah, and I used, I went out and stayed with Dave Goles in near San Francisco where he's beautiful house with him and Debbie, his wife. And, you know, these are my family. I've known Dave for such a long time and we didn't get on in the beginning. He was a bit nervous of me and, um, you know, I, I love him. He's my brother. He's my puppet brother. Mm. Hi Dave. If you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Dave. Hi Debbie. Can I come and stay again, please soon? Love you. Mm. Love to rock it. So, did you have any favorite songs that you did on the Muppet Show? Because, as I said, you did a hell of a lot of songs. Yeah. Um, well, I loved all the ones I did with Jerry. We did "You're No Good," which was "Angel and Devil," which I really loved because I, I, I that was the other thing for me. It was an education because I didn't know who a lot of the guest stars were. These incredible people. Um, but that was a Linda Ronstadt song. We had Linda Ronstadt on the show. And yeah, amazing. And I then got to work with her again because I did the film of Pirates of Benzance with her later on. Nice. So I hang out with her again. Um, so I love that. I love, we, we did, um, I told the witch doctor, da, 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 one of the yes. weird, weird Muppet ones, which was <laughs> wonderful. And Henrietta's Wedding, which was me and Jerry as well. Mm. I mean, I just, it's, you know, sometimes I go back and listen to these things and I think, oh, and, and the best thing, the best thing. And I, someone put, posted a clip when Raquel Welsh died, they posted a clip on Twitter of her doing I Am A Woman, WA, with Piggy. Yeah. Yeah. And 
the orchestra and Ronnie Verrill, who was the drummer, who was Animal. And the best thing about all that music, we did it with Jack Parnell and his orchestra, this full orchestra, incredible musicians. And sometimes they would lay down a track, sometimes we would sing with them live. But you don't do that now. It's all laid on, on a computer, one man with a computer putting lots of tracks. We got to sing with this unbelievable live orchestra of the best musicians in the country. For me, this was just incredible. It was unbelievable. So all the singing, you know, we did the singing on the Monday, we did all the recording, the mm -hmm. music recording, with this incredible, I mean, I still, you know, I did that. I got to do that with these people. It was unbelievable. And every so often when the guest stars were there, uh, I would lay down a guide track because the guest stars would, would maybe be singing live in the studio. So I'd sometimes get to lay down a guest track for the guest stars, which was great fun. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> hmm. I think one of my favorite uh, Muppet Show songs, you brought up Henrietta's Wedding, which is, I have the original uh, of that on my phone, actually. I um I played it once for a friend. It's like, this is not a real song. And I'm like, yes, it is. Uh, yes. I, I understand that it's got that silliness of the Muppets. Yeah. But that is a real song. But I think my favorite one that you did solo is um because the skit just makes me laugh. Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow wow. And Rolf's just making fun of the animal noises the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, everything we did was, and I learned sort of my musical vocabulary from all the stuff we did because they were all old songs you know there were a few new songs written for the show but most of the music was classical classic old songs and you know i um i didn't know guys and dolls and with pearl bailey we did he got the hearts right here his name is paul revere, paul revere. I didn't know, and i didn't know where that was from and richard hunt who was my sort of teacher and buddy you know, you have to learn all these shows. You have to know this is great history of Broadway. So that was my education as well on musical theater and all this stuff. Oh my God, it was it was incredible. Mm. Do you have any uh, stories about guest stars that came on The Muppet Show? <laughs> um, <laughs> do I have any stories about guest stars? Well, I or like was... or like any guest stars that uh, that you got to work with that you that you were just so like happy to uh, to, to be there with. Uh, of course, not that the Muppet Show didn't have amazing guests, but of course, yeah. like you know, there are some guests you walk in, and it's like, oh my god, I cannot believe that I'm eye to eye with this yeah. person. Like I had that feeling when I was in a room with Dave Goles and Steve Whitmire once. So yeah, well, I I mean, I think everyone when we had Danny Kale because as a child, I had loved Danny Kay. And he was one, when they were selling The Muppet Show, they'd always said, we'd have a guest star like Danny Kay. <laughs> so, you know, to, to finally have him on the show. And, but I, I was so, you know, this man, I'd seen all his films on telly and, you know, adored him. And I get terrible. I'm better now. But when I was younger, I would just be rude to people. If I sort of if I was I was so in awe of him I just sort of went up and I can't remember what I said but it would have been an obnoxious absolutely obnoxious thing because I was just so overcome with you know he was just God and then I Dudley Moore who I also loved I thought he was wonderful so I was I think I was rude to him as well you know um <laughs> jeez Jay's little ways, I know. Um, in 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 the way you only do when you're twenty and you don't kind of, you know. I I was just it was too much. These meeting these people, they were amazing. But mo what was lovely uh, was just popped something popped up on my screen. I haven't turned my notifications off on my uh, computer, so sorry. Uh, was had they all loved working with Jim. Jim was so brilliant at directing people. And Helen Reddy, who did the show, I seem to remember that she actually asked Jim if he would direct her show. Because it was just, he handled all these people so brilliantly. And they all loved doing the show. Everyone had such a good time. 
and and such fun and got to do you know in a way they were asked what would you do you have anything you would love to do and um, Beverly Sills the opera singer I think she had said she could hang a spoon on the end of her nose she did spoon hanging with Gonzo you know why because you know that was something she could do a stupid thing a Muppet show kind of thing she could do mm. and all but but just... it makes for good it makes for good comedy Yes, absolutely. And people doing things they might never, the serious people, you know, getting getting a chance to do things they might never do. And, uh, you know, I got a lovely bunch. When Roger Moore did the show, he, he had a date with Annie Sue Pig. I think Miss Piggy thought it was going to be her. And then he went off with Annie Sue Pig on a date. And um, I don't know if it was the writers, but somebody sent me a beautiful bunch of flowers for... Um, after my date with Roger Moore. I'd like to think it was Roger Moore. I'm going to pretend it was Roger Moore. He sent me a lovely bunch of flowers. Mm. Uh, I actually got the chance to see a guest star on The Muppet Show, like be in the same room with one of them, uh, John Cleese. Oh, he was fabulous. Yeah, he he came to Halifax for us on his stand-up tour. And um, my dad and my grandparents, we went to the show and uh, I mean, his comedy is very different than uh, what it used to be. Like, I don't know if you've seen what it is now, but he it's basically a university lecture. Um, yes. But he, uh, yeah. with humor uh, kind of mixed in there. And at the end, he actually took some Q&A. And oh. I'm I'm in the front row looking at John Cleese. And I thought, OK, I'd love to ask him, who is your favorite Muppet performer that you got to work with on The Muppet Show? And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, I'm in an ice hockey arena. And <laughs> thousand people are about to are going to hear me ask John Cleese about yeah. people that nobody really knows that much about and everyone's going to everyone's going to think who in the hell is the nerd who's asking this so I just kind of was like yeah screw it so I I didn't get the chance well he the thing I remember about John Cleese and it was very interesting because we had a lot of comedians on yep. and John Cleese was one who loved to rehearse mm-hmm some of them didn't, they were much happier not rehearsing and winging it and every take would be different. Mm-hmm. He was quite meticulous in wanting to rehearse. And uh, we had um, Marty Feldman was also on. And I remember every take would be different, mm-hmm. which is, you know, they're just different ways of working. I think he wanted to make the crew laugh, you know, if you do it the same every time, the people around you. But of course, we didn't have a live audience. It was for um, the audience at home. So it didn't really matter. But for him, he wanted to make it feel spontaneous, whereas John Cleese wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like him. Just from from what I know from watching him uh, do the stand-up show. Yeah, yeah, Mm. interesting. Mm. So... And but what is also I met uh, Linda Lavin, who was one of the guests recently, and she wouldn't remember me. You know, this is a very long time ago. But I said, hello, you did the Muppet Show. And of course, for all those guests, I I did four series of Muppet Show and then everything since. So, you know, people came and they did a day and they go next, next, next. And. But of course, for them, they did one Muppet show and she was so excited to meet someone who'd been on that Muppet show with her. And it was obviously such a wonderful memory for her. And I was watching, um, I actually do know Cleo Lane's daughter, I've worked with her, but you know, I know what it meant to her to do the Muppet show. And there was a documentary, a lovely documentary I watched a week or so ago on Sky Arts. And again, doing the Muppet Show really meant a lot to her and was a lovely, lovely thing. You know, it was a prestigious, um, you got to be a star of the Muppet Show. It was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd love to see them reboot them. I know that they probably never will, but it would be nice to see them reboot the Muppet Show um, like in the way that they would. Like my friends and I, when I was, when we were 11, <laughs> oh god this feels weird to admitting this uh live well not live but yeah. on in like on a recording but when i was 11 my friends and i would do our own version of the muppet show and my friends were the guests like uh oh, 
I, I think I might still have video of it somewhere, but I have a puppet on and I'm like, it's the Muppet show with our very special guest star. Uh, I had a friend named Zoe. So I <laughs> make her the guest and have her involved in all of whatever the hell was going on. Yeah. Yeah. What, which is great. It's great. I, I have such mixed feelings about it because you know, the characters are still going on. They've just made a mayhem um, Dr. Teeth band show, which, you know, from what Dave was telling me, I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. And the performers now are wonderful, but those characters came from the original performers' souls. Mm -hmm. They were aspects of everyone's personality. So I feel, you know, the characters are going on. They are going on. Steve did Kermit, now uh, Matt Vogel does Kermit. You know, they are continuing. Yeah. But for me, it was a specific time, a specific group of performers, a style of television which no longer exists. So, you know, to reboot it, I don't know how you can. How if Yeah, you, yeah. I... It's a very different time for television. Mm -hmm. Way, the way it works now and they've tried various formats mm -hmm. of, of trying to do it mm -hmm. and I've always felt in a way you know there will be those characters will go on because they're wonderful characters and those performances as I say are brilliant but somebody somewhere is 18 or 19 and they are developing the flubbles or you know something Right. With a, a group of people that, are like you, you have a story to tell, tell your story. Mm -hmm. Don't try and reboot The Muppet Show. You have something that you want to do that is maybe inspired by, or, you know, but, but every generation, every time has to have its own voice. Right. Mm -hmm. And... And, you know, the, the human thing, we want to tell stories. And one of the things of the pandemic, you know, it was all of us being locked away. We wanted to watch television. We wanted to hear stories. We want, that was a salvation for a lot of us of watching stories. And I think it's such a human thing and it will continue, but there will be new stories. and. You know, the thing, how I can't remember how many stories there are set, the seven stories or whatever that every story is based on. Um, but we will all tell them our way. And the mm. young people coming up. The, the wonderful thing, like with Shakespeare, young people read Shakespeare and go, has anybody, this story about Hamlet, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this guy, who is he? because they're rediscovering it, you know, and there's mm -hmm. a new voice telling the same story and Hamlet can be sh performed so many different ways because everybody sees it differently, all the great stories. So that's my long-winded answer to that. Uh, talking, uh, going back to the topic of uh, Muppets and celebrities, you also did quite a few of the Muppet movies. Um, yeah. Great, great Muppet caper. I, great Muppet caper, right? Yep. Okay, yeah. uh, Great Muppet Caper, Muppet Christmas Carol, Muppet Treasure yeah. Island, Muppets Most Wanted. Did you get to work with uh, any of the celebrities who were in those movies much? Yes, I absolutely did. I, okay. um, The one who was incredible was Michael Caine in mm. Christmas Carol. And watching him was an education in film acting. He was incredible. And I know it's been said a lot, you know, he wanted to make the best Christmas Carol, play the best Scrooge. He didn't want to make the Muppet. And he did. He was incredible to work with and so knowledgeable in filmmaking and acting. I mean, I was just blown away, blown away by him. Mm -hmm. And he was lovely, delightful to work with as well. Uh, um, Muppets Most Wanted, you know, Tina Fey was absolutely gorgeous to work with she was delightful um but all as i say most of the people that work with the muppets they do it 
because they want to do it. Mm. And they have a good time. They have a really, really good time. And it was lovely working with Tim Curry because I'd worked with him. I did um, the stage show at the Pirates of Penzance with him. So I had Oh, cool. With- and then he he was doing the Treasure Island, which was lovely. So mm. I was then. Mm. Yeah, we uh, when I when I was in the fifth grade, we actually did a play of Treasure Island, and oh. and I was in it as Long John Silver. Oh, and we, wow. yeah, and we used Muppet Treasure Island for inspiration. Great. <laughs> like like we would be in uh like we had time to kill between dismissal time and rehearsal time, so we would just spend our days watching Muppet Treasure Island when we weren't doing anything. Hey, why not? Exactly. Yeah. And, and like everyone, um, was, uh, like, for example, the actor playing, uh, Pew, uh, which of course was Jerry. It's me, Ben Pew. Like he would even try to imitate Jerry. Uh, like his, I remember in rehearsal, he was like, have you seen my friend Billy Bonds? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how brilliant. How brilliant. And I actually just did a retrospective on Muppet Christmas Carol. And um, as I was watching it to kind of get ready for it, uh, for, for to film and to know what I was going to say, I realized that Michael Caine's version of Scrooge was really, really abrasive. But I think like more abrasive than any version of Scrooge I've ever seen in TV and film. But that's really? a good thing. Yeah, but I feel like that's a good thing because that character is meant to be incredibly yeah. r- rude. And, uh, and Michael Caine really did a good job. Oh, he did a brilliant job. He did an absolutely brilliant job. No, mm-hmm. he was incredible. And he would, um, everything he did, you know, he was meticulous in his preparation. He'd come on to it, he knew exactly what he was doing. And he'd do something. And then he'd go, let me try it a different way. And he'd do something else. But he knew it would edit in. That was what was so brilliant. He knew technically where he had to start, where he had to finish. But he would then give you something different. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, no, I I, th- I thought he was, you know, of all the people, he was he was brilliant, absolutely mm. brilliant. And you also got to perform in the Dark Crystal, uh, yeah. which is an amazing film puppetry wise. Just like because it's it's a lot different than Jim's traditional style of puppetry. Because I feel like the puppets in the Dark Crystal were a little bit more, um, you know, realistic looking for a fantasy film. Um, yeah. What was that movie like? Well, it was really hard work. I can imagine, Um, yeah. (laughs) You know, physically very tough because of the Skeksis. I was one of the Skeksis and we were inside the costumes. They were very heavy, very uncomfortable. You, in, when we did it later, when we did the Netflix series, we had less cabling. They were still heavy, they were still uncomfortable, but the monitors, We had wireless monitors, wireless microphones, but everything was cables, um, you know, in in those days. So you were, I always remember being in a set in, I think the crystal chamber thinking, if there's a fire here, I'm dead because I ain't going to be able to get out of this hole. Um, So, yeah, it was a whole different way in finding the language of the movement of the Texas. The podlings were much more muppety. You know, that was where we had fun doing podlings. And the gelflings were really hard. And Kathy Mullen, who did Kira, did an amazing job of acting and the physicality of the puppet. Um, but yeah, it was a very different, very different physical language mm-hmm. in Dark Crystal. And we were less, you know, people. Some of the voices were done by the puppet performers, but not all of them. So again, always on The Muppet Show, we'd done the voices of our characters and mostly live. So this was something very... Yeah, that's the thing I always get asked about, uh, the voice when it comes to puppeteering. But uh, yeah, The Dark Crystal, of course, was one of the few exceptions. Yes, 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So eventually uh, you became part of the American version of Sesame Street. And I think you joined after Jim and Richard passed away. Yes, yes, sadly. I mean, I didn't, because I was working, I only, did, oh, did I do two? Bits? I'm not sure. I didn't do very much because then I turned it down and because I was doing theater work the next time they asked me. Okay. So I haven't been back for a while. But yes, sadly, it was after. I was in America 
when Richard died, I was with him. Oh. I was on holiday. He, he'd he'd wanted um, a holiday, Christmas holiday for his family. Mm -hmm. And in the end, he was too ill to come with us. We went to Utah and he couldn't, he, he stayed behind in New York with his mother and but wanted us all to go, the family. And then we came back and I was with him and going to visit him in the hospital and there when he died so, oh god yeah mm -hmm. so that was really um really tough so I didn't do you know and I'd been to see Sesame Street when he was doing it right and to the studio but when I finally did it Richard was dead which was Mm. Terribly sad. Yeah. Uh, do you have any favorite uh, characters that you did on Sesame Street? Uh, I don't know if you uh, did any like characters that appeared like in like in every single episode. Well, I mean, you know, I because yeah. I, I know you yeah. mostly did like one off characters. Yeah, I did one offs. So I did um, and what was I did a Grouch who was a chat. Oh. Is that that uh, Sally Messy Yakayel? Yeah. That's thank you very much. Thank you very much. And what was, I do you know I can't remember. Oh, but I did. I just um. There's a documentary about Shari Lewis, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked me to talk on that because I did a little. I think she was a lamb with Shari Lewis. A little cat. No, oh, I can't remember. It's awful. I watched it recently, but that was wonderful. No, I had. I just. Because Sesame Street is done much quicker. The sets are not built up, so it's much, you're sitting on the floor half the time. Mm -hmm. um, but again, to they let me do characters, singing characters. I did some great songs on Sesame Street and, and worked. And Kevin Clash, I did a lot of singing with Kevin Clash and Jerry. So, well, I love... I love Sesame Street because it's simple. And I mean that in the best sense of the word. One of the things the writers gave Jim um, a light up kind of fruit machine that played the Muppet Show theme mm -hmm. spelled out simple is good. <laughs> because the, he sometimes would get carried away with, can, is this possible? Can we do this with puppets? And I think the writer was saying, it doesn't matter. We don't need to do it with puppets. The simplest, you know, Bert and Ernie, just the simple, simple character-led things were so beautiful and so touching, so touching. You know, Kermit singing, it's not easy being green, Rainbow Connection. You know, they're just so simple and beautiful and the emotion of them, this little green silly thing that was Jim's, you know, made from an old coat. Mm -hmm. And it can create so much heart and feeling. Simple is good. Mm -hmm. So um, eventually uh, uh, you got to be a part of the Furchester Hotel, which is uh, a British spinoff of Sesame Street, which actually has aired here in Canada. Oh, has it? Yeah, I, I I have watched it. It's it's really really cute. Um, and uh, Norman Norman Styles. Um, do you uh, did you get to know Norman? He was head writer for Sesame Street. <laughs> Norman was a guest on this show, and um, he was saying that um. The idea for the Furchester actually came from something that used to be on Sesame Street called the Furry Arms Hotel. Yes. Uh, which I loved when I was a kid. Like, I, like, uh, this was a, 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 and that, that would have been when you were a part of the show, the Around the Corner era, when uh, the set had expanded. And now the Furry Arms Hotel is just rebranded in um, in England as the Furchester, where you got to play one of the hotel keepers, Fenella. Yeah. 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 What, was, what was that show like? Oh, that was brilliant. It was, I loved Fenella Furchester. And, um, we had so much fun and David Rudman was over doing Cookie Monster and Ryan Dillon doing Elmo, who are just brilliant. And Ryan was there all the time. David came and went. 
and the, the English performance, Warwick Brownlow Pike, who now has his own character on Sesame Gonger. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you saw Gonger on Sesame Street yet. Yeah, oh gosh, yes, yes, he's a big, mm-hmm. Gonger's big star now. Oh yeah. Um, but we had, we just had such a ball and it was, that was very fast, you know, show a day. Um, but but I loved Fenella. I absolutely adored her. Um, very theatrical. Oh, no. oh, got that off me. Um, yeah, we had we had such a great time doing. That. And for me, I'd always sort of had a mixed feeling about puppeteering. You know, I really should be acting. Oh gosh. And you know, I've been lucky enough. I've gone off and done West End shows, done a lot of stuff. So to come back and do Fenella joyously thinking oh I can do this I love this and I've done the other stuff but so for once I wasn't well really you know I really an actress oh gosh I I could embrace it absolutely and feel so grateful that I got another chance to come back to the puppeteering and then we did Dark Crystal after that so that was Mm -hmm. as well you know Mm -hmm. two two huge projects Mm -hmm. and um I'd been doing, I was playing the evil nanny in Mary Poppins and I got repetitive strain injury in my shoulder. Ouch. Yeah. And I thought, oh, gosh, I will never puppeteer again. Oh, well, never mind. I'm not doing things. And luckily I found a trainer and I really, really worked hard because for about a year I couldn't lift my arm at all. And uh, luckily I did a lot of work. And then so then when Furchester came up, I could do it and I could do Dark Crystal, which, again, was really physically um, very, very tough. Mm. But it but it didn't hurt after you hurt your shoulder? No, I managed to sort of repair it. And, you know, but but, the, but there was a time I thought, oh, well, never mind, I won't puppeteer again. But mm. then two of my biggest jobs came up after that. So it just shows never give up. Yeah. And, and, you know, what I would say to anyone, well, in life, yeah. look after your body, keep fit, eat well, exercise, whatever you do. I mean, it's just, it's sense. But if you want to perform, it is so important to keep strong and healthy and, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, do it, baby, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's tough, you know, the puppeteering is tough physical work. Yeah. You have to keep fit. Mm-hmm. So you got to be a part of another uh, Henson series that uh, I actually quite like watching, uh, The Animal Show. Yes, I love The Animal Show. Okay. That was Steve and Dave mm-hmm. and um, Bill Beretta. Was that where I met? Th- I'm not sure if I'd met Bill Beretta before. I that. think that was one of Bill's first um, bi- uh, Muppet sh- series. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll I'll have to I'll have to ask him. I'll message him, and yeah, I'll, yeah. and I'll ask him. So that was another one that was very very quick, speedy, and um, uh, we had Peter Harris directing who, mm-hmm. who Muppet show. So that was such fun. We had a lovely time doing that show. I mean, what was funny? We had the clips of the animals. And I think it was Anglia TV. And I, as I understand it, they had a lot of footage of animals from nature programs they had done. And we kind of got the off cuts. So the bits of the animals, it was a bit like the animal. And we had to try and make something funny of the bit where the animal was really bored or asleep or, you know, the shots of the real animals because they'd given us the bits they hadn't used in the programs. <laughs> The original, the exciting bits where they were chasing things or eating things. And and there were lots of songs in that. All the animals had songs. Or else the animals had songs. So that was great fun, uh, being interviewed, the animals. Yeah, it was brilliant. I love mm. that. Yeah, and, and it's a really, really, really cute show. It really yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've just, I've, I've done such lovely and... Um, um, the Secret Life of Toys, which was a, another lovely show, uh, which we filmed in Germany. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. 
we were staying in Cologne when we made it with a co-production. So that was bizarre. Why did we do it in Germany? And and Fafner Hall, we did near Newcastle, which was... Uh, yeah, I, I was just about to ask you about uh, Fafner Hall. Yeah. Hmm. So yes, that was... Yeah, what was that show like? Well, you know, everything I've done, even the ones, you know, Fafner Hall, not many people remember, but it was a great show about music. Mm -hmm. Richard was alive, Richard Hunt was doing that. So we had a great time. Uh, and we, they're, they're all amazing musical guests, you know, these incredible different um, um, fields of music. And I learned a lot actually about music and um, well, none of which I can remember now, but, but it was a really interesting show. The puppets I think were not very, they were quite ugly the design of the puppets. They weren't cute. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow it didn't catch on, I think. Something something didn't quite work with it. Uh, but you, you, you never know. We, the, the, the other one that very sadly um, didn't catch on was the puppet game show, which... Oh, yeah. Which again, didn't quite work. And I I felt with that, that was a case of trying to make a show that people wanted rather than the show we wanted to make. Because it was sort of, if we make a game show, it's a bit like the Muppet Show, but it's game show and everyone likes game shows and we can sell this format around the world. And it was kind of a bit like, how do we make a show that people like as opposed to what show do we want to make? I think. Mm. Um, and the thing of, you know, I, I suppose as a performer, and it's something I've only realised as I've got older, is that all we have to sell is our uniqueness. And in, in puppets, I think I was probably freer to be insane and bring me into the puppet. You know, Fenella is very much part of me yeah um, i can tell you both have that real uh sweetness and kindness you don't know me very well James. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh how easily you're filled you're fooled um but yeah you know i felt with her that i was at a place where i could bring me to it and that's that's the thing we're all searching for what is the unique quality we have because we are all unique and that's the only thing you have that people want to see they want to see why would i watch james why would i watch louise what is the the thing that's different not the thing oh she's just like xyz well then i'll watch the other person well, why so so finding yeah so puppet game show was a bit let's make something that people will like. Because mm. I, I do remember when that puppet game show premiered. I don't think it ever aired in Canada, but I do remember hearing about it on the Muppet fan blogs. And I, at, at that time, I remember game shows. Everybody was watching game shows uh, back then. And I thought, this this looks like a really, really interesting series. It's it, but, but it's too bad it didn't last long. It was, yeah. 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 yeah I, I don't know. I mean, it was better. I think the other thing was that it was it was sold as the new Muppet Show, which I think was a big mm. myth because yeah. Muppet Show was the Muppet Show and it wasn't the new Muppet Show and it was a different audience and it was... Anyway, who knows, you know, mm. time. Yeah. Moving on from Muppets, Sesame Street and Henson, um, you were in uh, Spitting Image and for any yes. of the listeners who don't know what Spitting Image is, just think of South Park but with puppets. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, and that like it's kind of like a, as I said, like South Park, kind of like a satire series where it's like parodying, in, in, at least that's the way I view it, like parodying current events. Um, hmm. And and you've got and you got to be a part of that. I do remember. Um, this might sound creepy, but I follow you on Twitter, and I remember oh. at the royal on the day of the royal wedding between Meghan and Harry, your video of Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> That just like so my whole family, well, my mom and I, we watched the royal wedding 
And I was like, look at this video that uh, Louise Gold posted. And she knew who you were from me being a big Muppet fan. Um, yeah, that. So, yeah, uh, for any of you listeners who uh, don't know, that's the kind of show that Spitting Image uh, is. Uh, and I think it's still going. Well, they rebooted it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there'll be more. They rebooted it. A, was it during the pandemic? It might have been. It was certainly just before. And on a um, streaming platform, BritBox. So it wasn't on the main channels this time okay. around. So it wasn't as seen. And in fact, a couple of weeks ago, they're doing a stage version of it in Birmingham. So I don't know. Yeah. Nice. Kind of, so... So, yeah, because, I mean, the only problem is things have been so insane in the last few years in your country and my country politically that it's very hard to make satire about them because they're beyond satire. Yeah. You know, our various leaders have been so extraordinary. But, yeah, Spitting Image was incredible. And, and it's so funny because the stage show, again, when we first started, Everyone said these puppets are incredible, but the scripts aren't quite as good. And yet again, you know, the puppets, the caricatures are brilliant. Mm -hmm. They really are, it's yeah. The, the, the scripts never quite lived up mm -hmm. to the puppets. But I got involved right at the very beginning. They got in touch with me as the English Muppet and said, can you help us set this program up and, you know, audition people and train them and... So I was involved right from the very beginning. Mm. Did you uh, puppeteer in um, the uh, video Land of Confusion by Genesis, which had spitting image no, puppets? No, I didn't do that. I didn't do Crap. that. Crap. <laughs> I was sorry. Uh, I'm I, I'm a Phil Collins fan, so and my yes. dad my dad showed me my dad is my both my parents actually introduced me to Phil Collins. I'm a huge Phil Collins fan. Yeah. My dad shows me the Land of Confusion video, and he says this is from a puppet show called Spitting Image. And I thought, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that show because uh, I know Marty Robinson, and he yes. was on that on that show as well. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, I said to my dad, "Does Phil Collins know that people made puppets out of him and various other celebrities to make this parody music video?" And he says, "It's his band. It's his yeah. band's video." Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it was mm. done. No, the, the one that I was involved with, we did at the end of one of the, well, I was only on, on the original, but we did Phil Collins, uh, Phil Collins, Sting. Uh, oh, nice. Make, and he recorded it, I think, for us. Uh, of, and it was a, it was a really pow very powerful, if you look that up on YouTube, mm. um, I'm sure I'm sure my parents are familiar with it. They've seen Sting twice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a very powerful um thing. And it was all one of the things we put out on Spitting Image mm. and he recorded a special version of it. Mm. Did did you actually get to meet him? I'm trying to make my parents jealous here. <laughs> no, I didn't. Who else? Anyone else they like? Oh, <laughs> I can't, I can't, no. uh, where where do I start? <laughs> Yeah, I met a few people. I met a few people. Okay. Have, um, no, but not that. Did they, Stephen Sondheim? Did they like him? Um, I can I can name a couple of my friends who did. <laughs> well, I worked with him several times, so uh, mm. I worked with a few people. Mm. So let's uh, wrap it up with a couple of fan questions uh, from some of our listeners. This one actually comes from not just the listener, but a past guest on this show who is. One of my mentors, a uh, big Muppet fan like I am. This comes from Ron Doucette, uh, a local animator here in Halifax, actually. And he wants to know, in The Muppet Show and The Muppet Movies, uh, which character did you enjoy playing the most? Whether it was a character who appeared often or once. Uh, did you have a favorite? Well, I loved Fenella. I loved Annie Sue Pig because she was my first proper character and Annie Sue Pig was me really you know I was the enthusiastic um coming in upsetting Miss Piggy that was me um but I did love all the singing things with Jerry I you know my favorite things those one-off things and and I loved Mordra Argot in Age of Resistance mm -hmm. she's a great character um 
And I loved being a Skeksis mm. because Skeksis are evil and evil is very fun to be evil. That sounded like uh, Eartha Kitt. <laughs> <laughs> she never did the, I don't think she ever did the Muppet show. She should have done. She mm. should have done. Yeah. So um, talking about Annie Sue uh, and for any of the listeners who don't remember Annie Sue, um, that was Miss Piggy's rival. So uh, the way that it worked on the Muppet show is that Miss Piggy was like the diva who constantly needed to be on stage no matter what it was. Um, but, you know, Kermit was sometimes like, well, if there, if there's not a spot for you. Secretly, I think he was trying to say you have no talent. Uh, and- <laughs> Annie Sue was the one with the talent, which really pissed off Miss Piggy. Um, so, uh, so this question comes from my sister's girlfriend, Emma Melanson, and she wants to know, what do you think would be a good diss line for Miss Piggy to Annie Sue? Like, if she wanted to tell uh, Annie Sue to go screw herself, what do you think she would say? Oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. I... Oh, I want to think of something brilliantly clever, and I can't. Um... What would she say? Because I feel, now that I think about it, any uh, jokes about pigs from Miss Piggy to Annie Sue would just be hypocritical. Yeah, you you can't really do a pig joke. She couldn't do a pig joke. No. um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to blow this. uh, Give me two days and I'll come back to you. I really, because Frank would think of something brilliant. Oh, yeah. (laughs) is a genius. Frank is a comic genius. His humor is so dry. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you think, is he being funny or is he? Oh, my goodness. And, you know, often in real life, I don't think people get it. because Yeah, I, I I ran into that with Frank once because, um, like, I, I follow him on Twitter. And uh, did you see the documentary that he did, Muppet Guys Talking? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So it was released the day after my 19th birthday. And so, oh. yeah. So ha- happy birthday to me from the Muppet Guys. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Frank was promoting it on Twitter, and uh, I said, hey, um, your movie comes out the day after my birthday. I wasn't looking for attention. I was just stating a fact. And he responded, yeah, that's exactly the way that we planned it. Well, there you go. That's Frank. You know, he's so, yeah. so bitingly. That man has made me laugh so many times on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, he's brilliant. He is brilliant. But, but especially... You know, with the puppets, he's very funny and it's very obvious. But I think in real life, I've seen him interviewed and I think they don't know. They don't quite get it. <laughs> it's just so dry. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think people always, well, maybe they do, but uh, but he is, he is brilliant. So I'm going to leave that to Frank. I think Frank would, would always think of a better put down than me. I'm sorry to bail on that one. Well, Fra- Frank, if you are listening, uh, leave a comment. What you think would be a good <laughs> line yeah. to Annie Sue uh, for Emma? Because you know. I don't think Frank is listening, but love you, Frank, if you are. But I don't think he is. But anyway, no, um, he would. The king of the queen, Dick Piggy. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, it's funny. Nobody believes me when I tell them that uh, Miss Piggy's played by a guy. Because, like, um, as I said, I was in a room with Dave Goles and Steve Whitmire. They were promoting. At the time, the new Muppet Show. This was like about eight years ago, and yeah. uh, I went to LA for a uh, Disney conference, like Comic Con, and they were promoting it. And there's Eric doing Fozzie and Animal, and it was so funny because somebody asked, um, "Hey Floyd, how's Animal?" And Matt's got Floyd on his hand, and he's like, "Hey Fozzie, go get an Animal." And Fozzie's like, "Why do I have to do it?" I thought to myself, "You're not fooling me. I know exactly why because." and eric even made the comment isn't it no mistake that miss piggy's not here and like i showed pictures to one of my friends and i said that's eric he does he's doing fozzy he's doing animal and she's like wait a minute uh, where's miss piggy i was like that guy is miss piggy she's like what (laughs) yeah well louise that's uh that's all i've got here is there anything you'd uh you'd like to say to finish no i just to every, anyone out there who wants to do this or any, anything artistic, just do it. Take mm-hmm. your inspiration. You are special. Mm-hmm. You have everything that is needed, all you folk out there. And I, when we were doing the Dark Crystal things, it was so brilliant, people bringing in their artwork that was inspired by Dark Crystal. I was just blown away 
But the most important thing is to take it and make it your own. Don't try and be Miss Piggy. Don't try and be Kermit or any of these things. Be your thing. Be your thing. You are special. And awesome. trust and believe and just keep going. I'll tell you listeners out there, never forget that. Uh, Louise, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. It's been an absolute pl- pleasure to get to talk to someone as legendary as yourself. <laughs> and old. That means <laughs> legend. It translates to very old. No, no. That's, no. I feel like the name of the podcast does that. Nostalgia talks. <laughs> Man, I am such a terrible, I'm such a terrible host. Uh, but anyway. No, 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 you're not, you're lovely. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you so you much. And to, all you, and to all you listeners, stay tuned. I will see you uh, next time. And don't forget to follow the Facebook page, link in the description, facebook.com slash Nostalgia Talk YouTube for a lot of extra content, Pictionary, stuff like that. Looking forward to seeing you. Peace.